All right, here we are. Welcome to the show. Good to be here, man. Second time around, we're going for it. <laughs> yep, second time. I, uh, I appreciate you jumping on. Um, we'll just get right into it. For people that don't know who you are, that have never seen you before, uh, tell people a little bit more about you know who you are, what you do, and then we'll go from there. Um, my name is Shervin. I'm uh, the founder and chief scientific officer of Symbiotica. Um, I'm an investigator, anarchist, martyr, uh, farmer, uh, you know, anthroposophist. I'm a, you know, experiential scientist, wizard. Um, I love to have a good time and I'm also a protector by nature. You know, I'm all about creating sovereignty within the, the faculty of men and women. And so that's really my whole, my whole perspective in this reality or this incarnation or whatever this whole thing is. I mean, that's, that's what I'm here to do is to serve and have the best time ever. How do you become a wizard? You, you become a wizard by going through initiation, right? So I was, <laughs> you know, I was sent to mystery schools as a kid. You know, I was going to mystery schools from age seven and on till about 13. And uh, through that, you develop faculties. And those faculties are, okay, how, how do you see things outside of the left brain analysis and the material uh, disease of this world, which is basically a spell? And so if you can reverse, reverse that spell, you can open up other senses. So wizard, obviously, is a, is a funny word. And we have a lot of magic movies and stuff like that. I see it more as someone who can, um, can see beyond the veil. Mm, see and, beyond and, the veil. And, and, and playing in the, the medicine realm and you know, living in the jungles of Peru and going through initiations there and dematerializing in this body and dying a thousand times, practicing samadhi doing all those things also brings you to another level of awareness. So all that is in, in all its, uh, all its glory creates a, a vision. And that vision is what I call like a wizardry or a, a spiritual science. That's amazing. Uh, for, for people that you've worked with and just people that you, maybe you've observed, right? What are some of the misconceptions of what you do that people typically like to run to? when you explain to them exactly what you're doing? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's human nature to put things in a box, right? Yes. It's just, it's, it's kind of uh, something that's probably been passed on from time to time. And, um, you know, humanity works by storytelling, you know, or just like, that's what we are. We tell stories. And yes. so because of that, you know, people want to rely on being able to focus on one aspect of someone. Uh, whereas, you know, we can be so multi-talented and multi-expressional and have so many different aspects of our conscious um, that is undeterminable. Uh, is, someone can't determine it based on not knowing you and experiencing you and going through battles with you and going through glory with you and all those things. And so for me, um, I think there are projection that, um, that I'm just so serious. I'm so... You know, I, I'm about my rituals, like there's no tomorrow. I'm so uh, disciplined and militaristic with my food, my nutrition, my lifestyle. You know, I'm rising at 4.30 a.m. I'm doing my satna, I'm doing my breath work, I'm doing my breath of fire, I'm hanging upside down, I'm drinking my salt water, I'm drinking my molecular hydrogen, I'm grounding to the earth, I'm getting full, you know, sun exposure. And then from there, I'm going and reading my poetry. And then from there, I'm journaling. And then from there, you know, it's like, it's so like yeah, I, I incorporate all these things, but at the same time, I'm having the best time ever. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wild, I'm crazy, I'm having fun. But I'm also serious when it needs to be serious. And it's like, it's just encompassing a, a dynamic approach. And I, I see that within my own consciousness. And, um, you know, I create momentum with it. And so I, I don't label my own, my own self. I don't pigeonhole my own self. I think that's a, a disease that's happening in, in our reality. Is people is like, okay, I got to be this. And that's, that's the limiting part where you can't expand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 430, man, that is early. I was thinking the other day, I was thinking, man, I need to wake up earlier. And uh, I'll wake up around 7, 730, maybe sometimes even 8. And I was thinking, I heard The Rock say, that he wakes up at four. He's like, oh, when I wake up at 4 a.m. and I'm working out, whether he does it or not, who knows, right? He probably does. Um, he's also, you know, enhanced. So it's a lot easier to uh, have energy. Um, 
but that's a whole nother topic that we could talk about. But he was saying, oh, I wake up at 4 a.m. I get this done. I, no one's going to outwork me. And I love it. I love all that stuff. That, that is like what I'm into, that Michael Jordan psychotic win or die mentality. I, that's like what I live for. Uh, I right. think a lot of people are lazy. A lot of people give up. I think David Goggin says that people give up at like 20%. You know yeah. what I mean? So you can do yeah. 80% more of the work. And I noticed that with myself in the gym yesterday, I was, cause sometimes you forget, right? You learn these cool tricks and then you go back to the gym and then you forget different tactics like intensity and you start, instead of being laser focused, cause you have 9,000 other things that you're doing, you start to like, you start to forget these things. And I was like, man, I haven't really been working out in, in an intense, like, I guess you could say bodybuilder way, right? Like if I was he- training with Phil Heath, he he would straight up say, dude, you're not, your intensity sucks. Yeah. And there's these little things that you pick up and maybe different exercises or different theories. And that's why I think building a second brain is so important, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, but you forget these things along the way. You have daily life, you have a wife, you have a husband, you have bills, you have your job, you, maybe you own a couple businesses, maybe you have a podcast, you're, you're going to the gym, you're shopping, maybe you have to take care of your dog. If, fuck, if, forget about it. if you have kids, you're screwed. So you forget about these things. And I noticed this about myself the other day when I was doing military press, I was behind the, behind the head doing military press. And I think I got about, it was 225 and I got a, around seven or eight. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm barbell. good. Bar- bar- yeah, barbell. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Yeah. And always behind the head, just so the deltoids yeah. are facing out. Cause a lot of times when you're here, you're doing a lot of upper chest. Yeah. And, too. and this was literally last night when, after I was done, done with all my stuff and I got to around eight or nine, it was like seven or eight. And I said, yeah, I'm good. And I was like, no, I'm not fucking good. Cause I talked to Stan, the rhino, Efren and he's like dude intensity and I was like what is intensity identify intensity like when you say intensity what does that mean to someone that doesn't work out and he said well it's someone that when you're working out let's say you can do 10 reps you're going to eight if you can do 20 reps you're going to 18 you have two left in the tank but barely two yeah so yeah I was going and I was going to stop at seven or eight and I was like dude I can do one more I was like you know what I'm going to see how many I can do until literally the bar I can't pick up the bar anymore. Yeah. And um, I had a spotter, thankfully. And so I don't recommend anyone doing this if you don't have a spotter. But I had a spotter. I was was about to quit at seven to eight reps. I was on six and I was thinking in my head, I'm good after this rep. I got to 22 reps until the bar literally, I couldn't pick it up anymore. It was 22. Yeah, yeah, it was all all in the mind. Yeah, it was your comfort zone, right? We get so accustomed to that. Or like bored hard. too. Have you ever yeah. worked out when you're doing reps and you get bored? Hundred percent, absolutely. Repetitive motions cause that, right? Especially yeah. if you've done it for 15, 20 years, right? Like what the heck? Exactly. Hell <laughs> totally. So I, I, I like what you're saying. I, I, I resonate with that. That was that was a great, uh, you know, breakdown. I think it's relative, right? So you know, someone's behavioral patterns or so, how berserk someone is versus the next person, right? And so it's like, yeah. Where, what, yeah, who are we comparing ourselves to? And I think, you know, that's why sometimes it's good to have a partner who's, who's badass. Yeah. Who's like, you know, who's on it. Right. And, or better and than you. Who's better than you. My right? whole life, my whole life, I would work out with guys that were either the same or below me because those were the guys that were motivated to go to the gym. The guys that were better than me were on their own schedule. Yeah. And I found out that I was helping out all these guys because I would have to take the weights off because I was lifting heavier. And then I wasn't pushing myself. I was kind of going through the motion. I was basically like their trainer for free. Yeah. You want to work out with people that are better than you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I completely agree with that. And that goes with everything in life. I mean, that's the whole point of a relationship is that, you know, you're coming to the table, both your glasses are full. All right. And it's like, how do we fill this up and make it even more? And we create this whole, you know, other size of fluid. And so, you know, energy exchange, vampiric energy, parasitic energy out there. There's a lot of that scarcity mentality, poverty conscious, all those things are debilitating to friendships. It's debilitating to networks. And we're seeing a lot of that because most people are living in fear. They're living in victim, Right. And they can't do the, that extra, you know, 15 reps. You were, you were hitting seven, you went 22, right? Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, what are we doing here? 
Yeah, exactly. But you never would have, I never would have pushed it if I didn't think about Stan telling me that literally the day or a couple of days prior on a podcast. So, yeah. So 4 30 AM. So let's, let's just reverse that 4 30 AM. Yeah. It's not all the time for me. And, and it's 4 30 AM. If I'm in bed by eight 45, nine o'clock, that was my question. What, so what time are you going to sleep? Cause I was doing the numbers the other day and I was like, if I can, if I wake up, if I go to bed at 10, I'm not really getting seven, eight hours and waking up at 4 a.m. Exactly. Right. So it's like, what, what's your flow? What's your schedule? What's your priorities? How organized are you? I think really at the root of all of this is organization. Right. And what I mean by organization is like failing to plan is planning to fail. Right. And so if you are determining that this is the lifestyle I'm going to live for the next 30 days and I'm going to check out every analytical self um, perspective I can have on how on my metrics, I'm getting better here, I'm getting more efficient here, I'm getting healthier here, my body is changing here, I'm allowed to take on more tasks here, then you're creating momentum. And then you're, you're taking a scientific approach, as opposed to just, you know, blindfolded throwing darts. I think too many people don't trust their ability to grow because they were never given the discipline to know how to achieve that. And so it's just easier to just escape, get caught up in the news, get caught up in the sick food, get caught up in the alcohol, get caught up in all the bullshit, a dopamine, whatever that is, pleasure, sexual pleasure. I mean, it's nonstop. We're yeah, men. Chronic, chronic we're, masturbators and adoration. Chronic masturbators, all that <laughs> stuff. You're just, you're just shooting your life force out <laughs> three times a day. You have no idea the depletion you're causing and the oxidative stress you're causing, which is leading you towards mental yep. debilitating diseases, endocrine diseases pituitary diseases, you know, prostate disease, I can go on and on and on. This is freaking crazy. So we, we, I think we just need to step back, recalibrate a little bit, take a deep breath and figure out what the hell we're doing in this life. What is? Well, what, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants I, that. People <laughs> want to double down, baby. We were trying to go to Mars. Everyone oh, jump yeah. on board. Don't get me started on that whole thing. <laughs> I, 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 that's a whole other subject. Yeah. Oh, so with, with waking up early, um, here's my thing. I love staying up late, whether I'm watching a documentary or I'm working out, I'm walking my dogs, I'm going to, you know, I don't drink, but I'm going to the bar with my friends. You know, I love being with my tribe. I love people that are like me. I love motivating people. I love them motivating me. I have a hard time shutting down. Yeah, of course. So that, so dude, eight o'clock. I'm not even close to ready to go to sleep. Well, if I don't go to bed at eight o'clock, I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. So do you think it's better to analyze how you function or do you think it's all cop out bullshit? Wake, no matter who you are, whether you're a night owl, you're a morning person, it doesn't matter. You can tell yourself that it's more efficient to work with your schedule or does it, is it like, listen, however your genetics are in, predisposed dna is you're going to be better because i've heard some people say like huberman says listen even if you're a night owl you can argue with me all day long if any human wakes up early you're going to be uh, more alert have more mental alertness you're going to be able to decide um, your decision making is going to be heightened at a different level i've also heard very smart scientists say you need to know what works for you and they would say for instance i will go to sleep at three in the morning. And I have that from, you know, midnight to 3am. I don't have any emails coming in. My wife's not driving me crazy asking me to do favors and go to the store. So I have this quiet time where I can really get in some deep work. Like Lex Friedman, I think he goes to bed at like 4am. So these are all very successful people and smart people in their own right. Do you think it matters on what your genetics are? Or does is it kind of like, no, that's all bullshit, dude. No matter who it, you are, waking up early is better, period. Yeah, so I, I think we can generalize and then we can get specific. So you mentioned a few people that that's working for them. But generally speaking, and it's not genetics, it's epigenetics. It's like really like the, the foundation of our human evolution. We're designed to rise with the sun. We're designed to get out of our primordial rejuvenation sleep, which is actually detoxification time. Sleeping is detoxification. That's why if you're fasting for seven days, you don't even have to go to sleep at some point. At day four or five of, of a fast, I'm not even sleeping because my body doesn't need to detoxify from all the food I'm eating and all that, you know, uh, absorption, elimination, all that stuff. So, so 
on an ideal level, you want to rise with the sun. And when the sun's declination leaves your line of sight, and we're not hit with artificial blue light and non-native electromagnetic frequencies and all these, you know, erroneous sounds and all this noise and dopamine hit and more cortisol and the foods and sugar and all that stuff, we want to go to sleep. Melatonin is expressed not only in the pineal gland, but every part of the body. Now, everything that Huberman talks about is the same thing I've been talking about for the last 15 years. You know, I, I you could, if you follow me back, I'm butt naked on the land. I'm, you know, I'm sunning my balls. I'm, I'm studying everything. I'm turning on my primordial force. Now, am I saying that is the only way? No, that is the ideal way. But if your lifestyle, because your life is, is going to be in cycles, you know what I mean? You, you don't, do, it's not the same thing for the next 70, 80, 90 years. You have different moments and different times in your life. If right now what you're doing is working for you, you're being successful, you're happy, you're finding balance. That's reasonable to say that that's your flow right now. You don't have to feel self-loathing or you're like, you're killing yourself. Is it ideal for optimal health? Absolutely not. You know, staying up in the midnight hours at three and going to sleep at 3 a.m. and then getting up at, you know, 9 a.m. Or, or whatever, that's taking your uh, circadian rhythm and your biological clock and the cyclical uh, human consciousness out of the, the the frame of our cosmology, which is basically the connection of our earth to our heavens. We're, we're completely connected to that on all levels. So is every biological carbon-based piece of life on this earth. And so finding balance, uh, you know, testing the waters and doing what works for you is ideal, but also know that our body comes with a set of instructions and um and the instructions are pretty it's it's at, at the root of it it's common sense right mm -hmm. you know right. if we're, if we're if we're pushing away from nature we're living in material boxes we're living in climate controlled boxes we're in living in lighting controlled boxes now today you just call doordash they bring you some weird food you know what i'm saying like we used to have to be out there exposed to all of these things living in all these things the ions the grounding to the earth the magnetic pulse of our earth which is the schumann resonance all these things we're, we're electrical beings before we're chemical or anything like that our entire system is running on an electric voltage and so that's how your heart's beating right your heart's beating on an electrical signal signal the minerals that we drink it's important because that's where that sends the electrical signals copper zinc magnesium silica calcium they all have a subatomic charge it gives off that, that's what separates that's why zinc is good for your prostate that's why this is good for this that's why this is good for this is because they all have a subatomic charge that tunes into our electric voltage if our voltage is completely off we're living in a high rise you know we're waking up at 10 a.m we're going to sleep at 3 a.m we're eating at weird times we're doing a disservice to the body and when you're young and fit and you're exercising, you can get away with that. But at some point, the body's going to start to break down no matter what. You can see it. I, I see it in friends um, around me. You can tell like who's taking it on the chin in terms of oxidative stress. And now because of epigenetics and really understanding what aging really means at down to the subcellular level, we know that aging is the leading cause of disease. So aging in itself is a disease. The disease, David Sinclair. Yep. That's right. Bio, well, you know, well, also, also biology yeah. of belief, which is the epigenetic code, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a friend of ours, you know, just shows that you're, you know, where you're at, what your thoughts, what your emotions are, are going to dictate your reality. That is, that is the code of it. Yeah. So, I, so a couple of things to uh, unpack here. W one, people do eventually like the tires fall off, right? It's just like a car. You, I don't care what type of car you have. If you have a Japanese car, you might get away with it for a long time. But if you have a German car, shout out to my Germans, German engineering, some of the smartest people in the world, but don't ever buy a BMW. I've had many BMWs and they don't last very long. Same. Uh, I've had a couple of M5s. This is a total yeah. disaster. Now I have a Tesla and okay, decent, not too bad. <laughs> a couple problems. But, you know, it's it's not a perfect car, but much better than BMW. But, I mean, to be honest, if you want a reliable car, you get a Honda Civic, you're good. Yeah, Agents, they don't, they, they don't make the pushed. most reliable cars. Yeah, the car doesn't push itself. It stays in its lane. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like, yeah. if you're driving a McLaren, 
and just taking it to the wall, you know, three, four days a week, at some point that car really needs a lot of help, right? Because it's yeah. pushing itself to the limit. Where as a Honda, it's not. You're coasting, That's, baby. Let's go. You're coasting. Yeah. yeah. Which me sounds like complete torture because I'm a push it to the limit type of guy. You can find bonds um, and Exactly. So, but a couple of things to unpack here, you know, as, as the wheels fall off, I think it's a lot easier now because of hormone replacement. You can, you can last a lot longer. Optimally, you, you might lose five, 10 years on your life in total volume, but like, look at the rock. I think he just came out and said that he was natural. It's like, come on, bro. But yeah, exactly. But who cares if he's not, I know, I know tons of friends that do steroids. It's not that big of a deal. I've never done it, but you'd bet your ass that when my testosterone is in the gutter, I'm jumping on TRT hundred percent. I am yeah. op- I will openly admit it, whatever, whatever, uh, you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm for science, whether that's helping you have a better quality of life. Even if that means you might not live to 90, you might live to 85. I'm cool with that. I'll take that trade any day. You can't, you, you're you not going to sacrifice with those kinds of interjections if you're taking discernment and doing it properly. If you're, right. if you're just, most guys aren't just, doing it properly. Yeah, most guys are blasting, blast and go. Cause guys, like how many of your friends go to the doctor? Girls go to the doctor all the time. They go to the OBGYN. How many guys are like, nah, they either don't want to know because they're scared or they're like, I'm good. I feel fine. I don't go to the doctor. Like an old sailor. Yeah, it's it's a combination. And and that's a a destructive force. It's like a weird. That's the ego. That's the ego. That's like a weird men pride thing. It's like, what? It doesn't make any sense. Women have no problem with that. Women go nonstop. It's For like sure. this weird, and that's and the guys get screwed because you're like, oh, you have stage two prostate cancer. Like you could have picked this up, or stage four, if you went to the doctor every six months or did your blood work every three months, you might might have caught of uh, caught it prior. But my question is, if if going to bed late is so bad for you, and staying up all staying up all night, waking up late is bad for you, you know, having fun, doing your stuff, why? is it's so easy to do that. And it's hard to wake up early, right? You would think that the body over time would evolve to make the things that are beneficial easier, but all the things that are bad for you are actually hard to do. The things that are bad for you are easy for you to accomplish. There's no, there's no strain. There's no hindrance. The things that people will say you should do, like wake up early, like Jocko, that's hard. So why yeah. is it so hard? Like, intuitively to do these things if it's right because we're in a dilapidated system that's why it's the (laughs) system that has bred this it is the system that has taken us out of our natural rhythm most people are 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 fighting to survive they're paying their bills they're paying their rent they're working in nine to five you know they're, they're they're killing themselves they're slaving away all day long and then when they get off from work what do they want to do they want to have fun they want to watch tv they want to go do social social things. You know, this country it's so was easy. It's why so is it easy. so bad for you if it's so easy? That's just that's the system. And that's <laughs> why we have that's why we're breaking records in every exotic disease. That's why we have a high divorce rate. That's why I mean, I can go down every single part of our socioeconomic situation and social uh, equality, uh, not equality, social uh, health uh, disorders. It's this is really at the core of it. I mean, our foundational practices, our rituals are completely in reversal of how we should be living. And, you know, look, it's just it's it's like the dimension we're in right now. It's like we have to, like, agree that this is the situation we're in unless we're going to have some kind of revolution and we dismantle this whole thing. We got to figure out how to be a ninja and, and operate in this. And figure out what's what are the risks I'm willing to take, right? And get serious. Right. So, cause it's, it's it's about risk mitigation too. Like I know if I go to Burning Man in a couple of weeks, I'm going to spend seven or eight days on the playa. I'm going to go absolutely berserk. I'm going to melt into the ethereal realm. I'm probably not going to eat food for four or five days. I'm going to be caught up in the desert. I'm not going to sleep much. It's going to be so hectic. I'll probably develop so much uh, chronic stress in my body, but I'm also going to have a memory that I'll never forget. And so yeah. how do I mitigate that experience with nutrition, with hydration, with mineralization, with figuring out how to, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. So it's, 
we, we got to just really look at our lifestyle and, and let that dictate how we're going to react to it. Um, I, yeah. I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I, I'm very, I want to be ninja on every decision that I make. And it, that, I just got used to it, right? It's just something that I've been doing at such an early age. I mean, I was mentored at age seven or eight of these topics, you know? And so I, I, I kind of built that into my frame um, at such an early age. Yeah. I know you said epigenetics plays a role in that, but as a kid, was it easy for you to wake up and go to school or was it hard? No, did your, it did your, mom, did your mom have to be like, okay, so, yeah, it- so here's my point for yeah. me. I would be the type of kid. My mom would wake me up. My parents were super healthy. Like I, I, I only eat whole foods. I didn't eat like, they wouldn't even buy me like captain crunch. I remember I wanted the, I don't know if you remember this. I don't know. I don't know how old you are, but um, it was the, uh, chocolate or the count count chocula count chocula, you count chocula? of course <laughs> yeah yeah and then they made like boo berries and shit so so count chocula i wanted it so bad i was like oh mom and my dad was like no he wouldn't want me eat mcdonald's he wouldn't want me do anything it was super healthy i i played sports i wrestled i played baseball um you know i'd go to my with my dad on the golf course i was in greenery but when my mom would wake me up for school, I was the most difficult fucking kid to wake up for school. I would, I would say, I'm, I would, I would say, yeah, I'm getting up. She would leave and I would she's like, okay, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth. And I would like lay on the bed with my feet on the floor still like, and I would just try to milk the shit out of it. Whereas my brother would wake up like that. Um, my girl would wake up like that, not difficult, but then my sister was the same as me. Yeah. That yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. So, because so, of diet, you know, like out of I the box. Kids, I think kids should not be getting up that early. That's my opinion. When you look at like the science and you kind of look at how, ch- how, how children are operating with their healing and their rejuvenation, kids shouldn't be waking up at 630, getting ready for 730 class. Kids should be sleeping till 8 a.m. You know, and that's how they do it with Waldorf schools and stuff like that. Like kids need that sleep. They're growing. Like, yeah. just think about that. Like, they're actually growing. The well, can't you go to bed earlier and just I mean, counteract that? I mean, you, you, you technically could, but there's just there's some truth that that kids under the age of fourteen shouldn't be waking up at six a.m. every day, going and sitting in a chair in class. If they're getting up and getting out onto the the field, and it's like breath work and movement, yeah. Yeah. that's one thing. But to go and sit down and listen to some curriculum about English literature or social studies or whatever the hell it is, some you know trigonometry, that is an absolute insult to a child's like development skills and their intuition. And so that's like if you if you knew you were getting up to go to a water slide or with a bunch of hot girls, or you're going out into the forest on a hike or something like that, I, I guarantee you after a year of that, you're fine waking up at 7 a.m. a lot easier than having to put your stuff on to go and sit in that classroom. You get what I'm saying? No, I, to- I totally, totally understand. Yeah. I guess what, like my point that I'm trying to make is that out of the box, and anyone that's ever had kids, I don't have kids, but I know people that have kids. I've seen my own siblings. Out of the box, you can have the same parents, same DNA, and they're completely different as child, as children and as adults. 100%. So what is, so what is that? Is that genetics? Is that, is that nature versus I think it's nurture? Soul. I think it's soul, you know, I'm not to get too spiritual, but it, it's, it's, it's not like, it's not a chromosome or it's not like X gene that's, you know, da, da, da. it's just, we have different souls you know the, the, you know you can have a brother and sister and two other brothers and they're completely different they're absolutely mm-hmm. different even though they're li- they grew up in the same household or whatever it's just some people are operating in art some people are operating in analytics some people have a little bit more grit some people are just highly emotional it's it's really a, a soul thing in my opinion <laughs> yeah yeah because if you look at I'm not saying Michael Jordan's kids aren't motivated, but Michael Jordan versus his kids, you know, they went to UCF, they played. I don't really think they were that motivated to go to the NBA. And the way that Michael Jordan is where he'd rather he'll, he'll gamble on anything, rock, paper, scissors. And he wants to win. And if he loses, he won't talk to you for a month. 
<laughs> right. Who, nobody taught him that. Yeah. Same thing with no, Tiger, Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps, all these high achievers. Um, you know, you kind of have to be born with that. So you're like, okay, well, I don't think Michael Jordan's, I don't even know if he has siblings. I think he does, but they're probably not like Michael. So, no. but he wasn't yeah. trained to be like Michael. He was out of the box. This is Michael. Elon, look at Elon. Elon is the oldest and he's a specific type of person. And his brother is not an Elon. He's not dumb by any means, but I think he like works for him. And so yeah. it's like, w- what happened there? You know, yeah. is it, you know, you get the scientists in the lab, like, oh, this chromosome is different on Elon versus his brother, or is it some weird outer force that we're not having enough neurons in our brain to, to comprehend? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, I think we, we all come here with our talents. We all come here for purpose. Um, I, I believe every soul that carnates on this world has a purpose-driven life. Um, just because of our system right now, uh, a big portion of that those incarnations are not living in their dharma. They're not living in their chosen destiny. And that's why we're having the problems we're having across the board from healthcare, education, financial system, wars, poverty, and go on and on. If, yeah. if everyone was living in their what, what they're here to be doing and how they're, they're here to serve humanity, it would be a much different place. Let's forget about health for a minute. Obviously, sure. health is important. If you don't have health, you don't, you're dead, period. Yeah. But let's talk about productivity. And we'll say on the sleep cycles, Katie Murder. What happens if you are super productive? Let's say you're an author and your writing time is from 11 to 4 a.m. because the kids are sleeping, your wife's sleeping, or maybe your husband's sleeping, and they're not asking you to do stuff. Might not be optimal health wise, but from a productivity go getter, entrepreneur, influencer, whatever the hell you want to identify as, do you think that no, you should wake up at 4 a.m. and then you have those two hours? Or should you go to bed late from a productivity standpoint? Do you think there's any exception to staying up late and doing the complete opposite cycle that you do? Yes, absolutely. 100%. Sometimes we got to sacrifice a little bit. I mean, I'm living a life, half of the life that I'm living right now is not in my best. I'll be honest with you, but I'm building a billion dollar company. You know, we, I have a, what do you mean by, what do you mean? You're not living your best, like well, your I'm, sleep I'm, cycles messed up. No, I'm just, I'm grinding. I'm grinding mm. like heavy. I'm doing, I'm, I'm obligated to things that this is not what I want to be doing. I want to be it, 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 at my farm in the North shore of Kauai, you know, planting food, having the best oh, time God. ever, having immersions. I want to be on the beach right now surfing. You know, I don't want to fly to Austin in a few hours and go do all the stuff that I got to do over there. I, I'm, so I'm, this is part of, you know, this reality, you know, we can't always be doing what we want to be doing, you know? And so if you have a good reason, there's a purpose behind why you're going, you're, you're working from 11 PM to 4 AM because that's your window to crush it. Then you got to do it. It's not going to be permanent, right? That's the whole thing. It's just like inflammation, like inflammation we need to survive you need to have a reaction to an injury you need to have a reaction to all kinds of things it's when it becomes chronic that the disease state starts to creep in and so it's the same thing i, I think it applies with these things you think kobe bryant wanted to get up at 3 30 a.m and do all the trainings that he was doing and then go back at it at 2 p.m you know all summer he was working on his footwork he wanted to be the best execution footwork of any player in the history of the nba and i think he achieved that and that took grit and hard work he could have easily just been hanging out uh in newport coast and you know having champagne and going and doing all this kind of stuff and enjoying time with his family he sacrificed that to be the best and so we have to figure out you know, where our comfort zone is and what we're here to achieve. Some people, that's just not in their cards. They, they're just floating. They're just relaxing. I mean, I have friends in all walks of life. I have material maniacs that work 18 hours a day that are literally grinding like I couldn't even. And when I compare it to my grind, I'm, I'm nothing. Right. It's all relative. And yeah. then I have you're lazy. That, <laughs> you're lazy. I'm, la- I'm, I'm lazy compared <laughs> to these. They're, they're animals. There's no balance there. Their health is deteriorating. They don't give a shit and they know it. And, 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 and they're not in denial about it. And then I have friends that don't care about any of this material success. And they're literally just they're, they're living in the forests and they've built out their situation. They're off grid. 
and they're living that life, right? And so for some of us, that works. For some of us, it doesn't. It, I, I'm about finding balance and, and being truthful with myself. And so if you're listening to this, be truthful for what your purpose is. Don't be in denial. Don't force yourself into something because you think society needs you to be a certain way or your partner needs you to be a certain way or your parents or your friends. Just go with your own autonomy, right? Your own freedom. That's the key right there. And then you can figure that, figure everything else out. Don't you think Kobe Bryant and people like that that were waking up at 3 a.m.? Obviously, nobody wants to wake up at 3 a.m., but don't you think that he was so obsessed that he actually did like waking up that early? Oh, I don't think I know. You know, I, I've yeah. talked to Kobe before. You know, Kobe was my Jordan, right? And so I'm a Southern California guy, and he was my neighbor. And Kobe is like, you know, when you, when you, I, ha I have this epic art piece of him on the wall here. Um, I look at it every day, you know, when I get up, you know, 4.45, 5 o'clock, staring at that, I'm looking at it. And I'm just like remembering, you know, what it took to get to that position. And my drive is not to be this successful entrepreneur, whatever. My drive is to help as many people as possible. And so it, when it comes to like aesthetics, like I used to train two hours a day, you know, I was walking around at 2.20 at like 10%, you know, for 14, 15 beast years. Mode. <laughs> yeah, beast mode. Like, and I was, it was like, and then I, I, I realized, you know, what, like, what am I doing this for? You know, at the core of it, you know, it took a ceremony in Peru for me to realize what, what is the reason behind this? And so my whole thing is like, if you're going for success, go for success because you love what you do. The money will be the side effect of that. If you're going for, you know, your aesthetics, go for your health and let the health purpose create the aesthetics. Let that be the driving factor. Though that is the that is a big key that I can offer people. When you're chasing money, when you're chasing women, when you're chasing things that um, have a dead end, you're not going to reach it, and it's going to be a disaster. When you're chasing things that you love, and you're bring and you're offering the world something, that is the true guidance, and that's when you're living in your truth, and you can then make sacrifices because you are in love with what you're doing. And you feel good about it. You know what I mean? As opposed to hating yourself yeah. or being miserable. That, that's a terrible uh, conscious that's permeating through a lot of people is that they, they hate what they're doing. They hate and they hate themselves for it, right? They don't know it, yep. but they are. Their subconscious <laughs> is strong, man. The subconscious is powerful. Yeah, it's the uh, hamster wheel of death, like I like to call it. It's, ne it's, never, uh, it's never ending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is never ending for sure. Um, we, we no, not too many people can say that they knew Kobe Bryant, right? So obviously, like if he's your neighbor and he, you know he's next to you and you've talked to him, there's little things that he does that aren't reported, right? He, there's little things that if me and you were hanging out on this interview, I'm not going to be able to pick up. I have to spend time with you. I have to see like stupid stuff that you do, like how you walked, how you go outside, and how you approach things. If you see a something stupid as like you see a bird, your comment about seeing that bird, no one is analyzing. And I wonder what Kobe says about birds, but just the it's not about the bird. It's the thought process on how you think about that specific bird, right? In everything, yeah. the thought process of doing anything. What were some of the things that you picked up on knowing, you know, and talking to Kobe Bryant that wasn't reported, but is drastically different than 99% of the population. Well, I, I noticed what, well, when I saw him and had that experience, he had matured quite a bit outside of that, like, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old, right. He went through a massive maturation process and I was, I'm three years younger than him, three, four years younger than him. And, um, and so what I, what I can say clearly is that his level of presence was so clear, meaning, you know, he was, uh, you, you didn't feel like this was someone that identified himself as Kobe Bryant, right? Mm. He, he had taken the mask off of the projection and the identity of who people project is and just became a, a regular dude. And that's... Yeah. Uh, that's really refreshing. I'm around a lot of celebrities. I'm head of nutrition for a couple world number one athletes. One of them is about to walk in that door right now. 
Nigel Houston, he's the top skateboarder in the world. Uh, Novak Djokovic, top tennis player in the world. Mike Tyson, I've spent a lot of time with these guys. And what I've noticed with these guys and why the law of attraction is there, where I'm connecting with them and helping them with their health and life and all these things, is they're not playing into the character that society has made them. And that's a very, very powerful archetype and presence to have is because a lot of people get caught up in what they see others perceive them as. And then I'm not even talking about celebrities. I'm talking about me, you, everybody out there walking on the streets. Most of them identify themselves how they perceive others perceiving them. Just think about that for a second. So your, your self-identity is the constitution of it or the construct is how you think others see you. And that right there, that goes down and creates so many layers of frustration and anger and resentment because you're not being you and you're just, you're, you're caught up in the mess and that, that unravels and creates momentum into terrible directions. So I would say with, with him, you know, I, I, we could talk about every attribute he had. I mean, there's so many things, but for him, right. it's just, just being wholesome and authentic to the bone and helping That's people. Great. There were the car accident that happened um, up on Newport Ghost Drive. I wasn't there, but I saw the video of it. There was a head-on collision, all this stuff. And who's out there running around helping everybody and putting people on his back it was Kobe Bryant. You know, it was Kobe Bryant in the middle of the season. You know what I'm saying? Like he was not, and it was, it was hectic, right? And that's Kobe doing that. And that, that that's an impulse. You know, that's not a thought. Yeah, that's, that's, who, that's who he is. It's not, he's not trying to get tabloids. That's, that's who he is for sure. No, yeah. 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 I always tell my friends, be the gold, right? It's kind of how Joe Rogan says, if you're, don't look at trying to get more people, because once you start looking to get more viewership on your podcast or your YouTube, people can sift through the bullshit. They know that you're just trying to get more attention, be the best version of yourself. And it's cliche and boring of an answer that is be the best version of yourself. Be interesting to yourself. Don't be fake interesting. Don't talk about stuff you don't care about just because you think it's going to get clicks. Yeah. And then you'll get people over time because people can see through the bullshit. And it's kind of what I tell my friends, like some of these guys that, you know, they're single guys and they're trying to get girls and they're like, girl, they basically have like girl repellent uh, around them because they're chasing, chasing, chasing and girls are like running away. Right. I say, you don't want to be the shovel. You want that to be the gold. The pe People go to you. People chase the gold. The gold doesn't chase the shovel. You're a shovel. You're trying to find gold. You have to be the gold. Well, what does that mean? That means you have to level up. People don't want to hear that shit because that is hard. I love and that we're talking about. I just <laughs> these are the conversations I'm having every day. You know, it, it, this you don't talk about this on on shows. No, I mean, I'm usually we're just going down all the health stuff, spiritual stuff. Um, but this is this is a very powerful aspect to our reality. What you what you just said right there. It's like the used car salesman. Like, what do they teach you? Like, if you're forcing the car down someone's throat, they're not going to want it, even if they came to the lot to get it. But if you act like this, ah, this might not be for you, right? You know what I mean? It's yeah. the takeaway, right? Energetically take, taking things away. Um, human nature is going to be like, wait, what? Well, I want that. And so I, I call people out. Actually, I, I was doing this a while, a couple of years ago, not so much anymore. I call a <laughs> lot of people out on social media, just like, Dude, you can tell whose accounts they're just, it's just like, they're just trying to gain more followers. There's no authentic message. It's regurgitated dribble. It's algorithmic bullshit. It's just so ridiculous. And I kept, I just kept saying true to my message, true to my message and authentic. And finally it just caught on. And, and that's, that's really what it's all about. In my opinion, if everyone was in, in their authenticity, they're going to be living their best life ever. They're going to attract right, right. the people that they want to attract. If you're acting like a douche, you're going to attract douchey people. It's just it's as simple as that. If you're a criminal, mm -hmm. you're going to be around criminal people, mm -hmm. right? If you're this, if you're, it's, it's just law of attraction is so real beyond just like a cosmic perspective. It's like a material perspective. It's like karma, right? You mm -hmm. go, you go, you know, beat somebody up. You might have to deal with their older brother, right? And it's like, that's just, the yeah. way this world works <laughs> or you embarrass him and he comes back with a gun yeah you just, that's the you reality just never know you never know for sure people are yeah. fucked up you know <laughs> guys people are in pain. 
Yeah, stop making un I don't even want to say uneducated decision, like unnecessary risk decisions. <laughs> If you fight someone, there's always a chance that if you embarrass him, especially if it's in front of a female, that he's going to come back with a gun. So be mindful of that and pick your battles. That's totally. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. And, and, and you because know. of social media and because of all this technology, we're now being seen by so many more people. And believe it or not, when you see someone on a screen, you, your brain doesn't interpret it as a screen. It's like you see the person that's how that's the whole thing that's why an energy exchange on social media is so powerful it's just like seeing someone in person that's why people that are scrolling through 50,000 lives a day and people this all over the place it's such an escapism it's taking them out of their presence I talk a lot about escapism as being one of the root causes of disease you know the more that we're just and that's how the whole system they want you to escape that's why they're giving you all this clickbait bullshit and getting you and giving you all this like crazy wild stuff and all the, you know, all the chicks with their asses out everywhere on, yep. on social media. It's insanity, right? It's like, whoa, you know? <laughs> well, you don't like the guys here. that take pictures of their body with their abs and they have like some spiritual quote. Those are the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love those. Or so, some half naked girl and she's just like, oh, I went to this Zen session and it was amazing. And it's just like, you're naked in your picture. Yeah, and your hip is 40 degrees inverted and your ass is coming out like this. Is this really how you stand? Look, I, I'm no. not. I'm not passing judgment. I'm just no, no. Just yeah, do speed, do whatever you speed. want. Yeah, there was a video. This, yeah, yeah. There was a video. <laughs> right. There was a video of this girl on the on the airplane, and she was photoshopping her body. And the guy was like filming her in a couple seats back on the, on the airplane. And he was basically like, these hoes catfishing, don't trust, don't trust them. And I sent it to one of my buddies and he's not about, like, he doesn't even want to post on social media and he, he wants it to be the rawest form and everything. And I sent it to him. He's like, oh, I'm curious to see what you would say about that. And um, I just literally sent him a text message back. This was yesterday. I said, life is competitive. <laughs> that's it <laughs> right i mean yeah that's right that's it life's competitive. competitive i don't i don't blame her you gotta no. you gotta find listen if you want to post half naked pictures and and have a spiritual quote and that gets attention and it's helping you with your career who am i to tell you don't do it yeah so be it just yeah. don't just don't knock other girls for doing it Oh yeah, right? that's that's the that's hypocritical the thing, part, right? Yeah, a, a lot of people that they like to the, they like to the dish it, they can't take it, or they know what they're doing wrong, so then they find that the same action in someone else, and then they attack it. That's yeah. a problem. That's a big. That's actually a, a a problem that I'm seeing that's happening a lot. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people are are talking shit to people, and because they can and identify they what they're doing, right? Because they yeah. can parallel it. It's so crazy. Yeah. Just yeah, you gotta you gotta be the gold, guys, or and girls, yeah. be the gold. Uh, I always, whenever one of my buddies says a girl turned them down, like, oh yeah, you know, she she doesn't want to come over. She's busy. She's got oh, like you know, like when a girl texts you, or a guy texts you, it's like, oh, I gotta walk my dog. I gotta go to Dubai. I gotta jump out of an airplane. Like whatever excuse they give you, I said, I would tell my buddies, and I still tell my buddies to this day, the single ones, I say. Do you think if Leonardo DiCaprio texted her, she would say that she has to walk her dog? No. she. It's not that she doesn't have time. It's that you're not a priority. Yeah. And that means that you're a fucking shovel and not the gold. Yeah, Become the gold. And what the hell does that mean? In very, very simple terms, optimize your life, level up, be someone that is a high-value male or a high-value female. Because high-value men and high-value women are high value people want them so you're not around in this rat race hamster wheel of death chasing girls around or chasing guys around because they're coming to you because you are a high value so instead That's of chasing that become better instead of chasing money in your business make your business better 100 percent. we're on the same page self-worth right self-love what a concept yeah. i mean really this is all about self-love you know yeah and, and getting into like, strategic love you know, yeah <laughs> same thing right yeah. yeah i know a lot of people that love themselves and they suck it's strategic love well, I, I don't i don't mean that kind of that kind of love i mean okay. more like you're 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 doing the work 
and the discipline because you love yourself, yeah. not an egocentric, an exocentric, like I'm, I'm worth taking the steps to get better. I'm Absolutely. worth, yeah, I'm worth listening to a podcast instead of watching Netflix. I'm worth doing this extra, you know, workout. I'm worth drinking, drinking spring water. I'm worth, you know, putting a shower filter in my municipal shower tap water. Um, you know, I'm worth doing these things. And these things create momentum, little things. Like some people think it just needs to be this massive drastic shift and you got to go hang out with the Dalai Lama. And then from there, you know, all these things happen. No, that's just, it's a, just, that's just an excuse. Just it's an excuse. excuse. Yeah, you're just, yeah. a lot of people like that reality. Have you ever been in that reality where you're like, when I do this, my life is going to be X. Sure. And that weird little brief moment in your imagination, you feel amazing. It's kind of like you picture yourself walking into a bar and a bunch of guys are like bullying you and you just turn into John Wick, right? It's like this weird fantasy and this weird emotion of like, I'm the man, but it's not real. But people yeah. that aren't motivated in real life, they like to stay in that fictitious, you know, imaginary world. That's why, man, I'm all for technology, but the metaverse and all that stuff... I'm, yeah, I'm gonna not be, a fan of it all. It's going to be I'm, a rough. I'm I'm fan of technology, but the metaverse, man, that's going to be rough. I can't even play video games for more than 10 minutes without wanting to go outside. I can only, how, how are you going to be on the internet all day? And then now your life is there. It's going to be that's uh, insanity. Gonna, I don't think it will work. I don't think it will work. It better not work because we're already becoming so sedentary. I mean, we're already, uh, we've already merged with AI. I mean, just, the, you know, mm -hmm. our phones are such a big part of our life, you know, on how we are. Yeah, we're already everything. cyborgs. We're already, yeah, we're already like our ingenuity, our connection, our communication, our reality, our perspective is shaped on this device that's tapped into a, a network. Right. And so it, that's taking things to the next level and the next level that's, we're playing in a dangerous, uh, dangerous game. I've talked about this before. I'm actually writing a book on this. Um, yeah, on, on hyper materialism, uh, and how we've entered that, that stage and we're going in, in the next 20 years, in my opinion, and based on some philosophy is the, is the, the 20 years that's like, we need to figure this out. Cause if we keep going at this rate by 2040, we're going to enter something that they call the eighth sphere, which is a dystopian reality, completely removed from nature, completely removed from who we are, where we are, where we came from. And we've almost like forgotten what we've forgotten. And so, and that's a, that's a possibility because look at the generations now, look what they're all into. Look at all this shit. It's mm -hmm. insane, you know? So, yeah, but in a weird way, aren't you a little excited that you're, we're going to be so much better than 90% of the population. So that's a Darwin. So, okay. So interesting. <laughs> so funny, funny. You said that this came up in a conversation yesterday is um, so I'm not a, I'm not a Charles Darwin guy. I believe that we have a soul. I believe that we have a purpose here. I don't believe we're just flesh and bone. But the way I'm looking at it now, especially after this whole social experiment we just went over went through over the last two years, I won't yep. get into details on that. Um, I do believe in survival of the fittest. I do believe that the fittest will survive, and those are the ones that will procreate, and those are the ones that will teach the generations. And so, so th there is some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah, in a weird way, I'm like, yeah, dude, be, yeah, love, love yourself and go to the metaverse. And I'm out here grinding. There it is. That's exactly, <laughs> that's, dude, Justin, that was the best ever, dude. I'm, I'm going to replay that every time I'm listening to the podcast. Right there, that line was so good. Yeah, yeah, dude, by all means, you want to do that? Go do that. You want to do this? Do that. You want to, <laughs> you know, you want to go that medical route? Go that medical route. You wanna, dude, just do it over there. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Just do it on your lawn. <laughs> yeah. Now I know why you're in Florida. Yeah, yeah. You have a really good governor. <laughs> yeah. Florida's Florida's lit, bro. I love Florida. If you ever yeah, come out here, we'll 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 go out to dinner and we'll burn it down. It will be fun. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I know we're running short on time, but uh, these people that listen to the show, they always send me hate mail on. You didn't do any actionable things. I want to actually. I don't want philosophy. I actually want actionable things and. <laughs> I don't blame these guys and girls because I was the same way. I would listen to Tim yeah. Ferriss and he, and I'm like, okay, Tim, like, let's hear, what can I actually do right now to change my life? So in a very <laughs> basic way, right. What would be your 80, 20 to an average Joe or an average Amy? 
Yeah, well, I would understand your own patterns or understand them, right? And so like do an analysis of your last 30 days, maybe the last seven days, maybe the last 24 hours, and just figure out where in those in that time are you are you drifting out of your present and you're finding yourself going into a distraction level, right? So like are you arguing with your partner too much? Are you miserable at your job? Are you doing unhealthy eating? Are you escaping? You know, just do do the analysis. That's before you add anything. Everyone asks me, Sherman, how do I do a cellular detox? Can you walk me through a 21-day cleanse? I want to detoxify my liver, my gallbladder. I want to open up certain parts of my body, this and that. And I'm like, well, before we go into cleansing, what are you putting in your body? What are you mm-hmm. putting in your conscious? What are you where where are you wasting and getting your soul sucked out of you? So that's first and foremost. And then I would start getting identifying your daily rituals, you know, so what are your like, non negotiables that you're doing right now? Are they working for you? Or are they not working for you? Because if it's if you're doing the same thing over and over, and it's debilitating you or keeping you at a, at a constant, that's the definition of insanity. And so we want to figure out what little steps can we make? Look at your sphere of influence. Who are the top five, six people around you that you're communicating with the most every day? And are you a sum of that? Are you guys moving in trajectory together? Are there secret secrets between these groups? Are you guys playing in a toxic environment? Are you like mirroring all the bullshit, cheating, lying stuff on TV, all that bullshit, and you're into that kind of stuff? Maybe you need to extract yourself from that. What kind of water are you drinking? Are you drinking your tap water? Are you drinking some purified water? Are you drinking spring water? But, you know, maybe you need to just change your water and everything will change with that. What kind of foods are you eating? You know, are you eating state-sponsored government food? Are you eating out every night? Are you cooking your own food? Are you putting your own magic into your own food? What, what about that? You know, we talked about our sleep patterns. You know, so like, what, how are you going to sleep every night? Are you watching TV till you fall asleep at 1 a.m. and getting up? Like, what, what are you doing? You know, and th- those, those are like core, core principles. And then from there, I always say it's time to take it up a notch. You know, like get involved with the community with where food's coming from. You know, I'm a qualitarian. I don't, I don't get caught up in any ism. I eat nothing but quality and intention. I know exactly where my meat's coming from. I eat my fruit at the right time. I predicate everything around my workouts. I'm test, testing my body. I practice hormesis. That which does not kill you makes you stronger. I'm jumping in a cold plunge. I'm hanging upside down. I go in the infrared sauna. I do a lot of high intensity interval training. I can go on and on and on. There's so, Wait, so do you hang things. upside down to get the blood flow to the brain? A combination of that. So to get the blood flow to the brain, to get the heart above the head. There's, a, there's an energy to getting your heart above the head that helps the lymphatic system and also to elongate my spine, right? So I'm mm. decompressing, right? That's a very, very important aspect to our life because all of your motor skills, your information, nutrition is coming down the spinal cord. The spinal cord is where all the impulses go to every meridian in the body. Your brain is governing your liver, your heart, and all those things. So if you're compacted, your posture's off, spine is compacted, you're sitting in a car all day long, you come home yep. and you sit on a couch, you see people, they calcify, their bodies become like that, your information's getting stuck, your nutrition's getting stuck. So we wanna always be in that practice. I tell people the first thing you wanna do when you wanna get healthy is go stand like a tree for an hour every day. Just think about that. Who has the balls <laughs> to do that? Who's got the willpower to do that? Where's your, how, how weak is your, your willpower? Do you listen to a podcast while you're standing there or you just, dead silence? Dead silence. And but Ooh. I'm not saying that's the only way, but that's how I do it. You know, when I did a Vipassana, I did a 10 day silent retreat. You know, that was a commitment. You know, you got to put yourself to the test. I think we've mentioned it before. We live in artificial boxes. We live in artificial temperature. We have food delivered to us. We're staring at electromagnetic televisions with radiation flying all over the place with electromagnetic frequencies i mean we're we're as like far off removed from survival as ever Mm. that's why you have children that are super overweight that's why you have an obesity thing right and when i see people that are obese i don't know people that eat i don't see people that eat too much i see people that are nutrient deprived because they're eating empty calories that's why their metabolic system is shut down 
That's why their endocrine system is not working. That's why their thyroid is dilapidated. It's because their body is not gaining nutrients. When you're getting nutrients, you're not, you don't have cravings. Your body's not filled with parasites, candida, bacteria that send signals to your brain. I need something sweet. I need something sweet. You know, you're not riddled with heavy metals. You're not riddled with all these poisons. So it's like, it's really like, it just comes down to your self-worth. You know, we talked about that, your self-love. Can you mm-hmm. develop willpower? And do you have the discipline to go and learn these things? I get a thousand people a day, probably either emailing, calling Symbiotica or messaging me online, asking for me to help them, right? And it's, it's funny because I can't even open these messages, but I, I sometimes skim through them. It's very similar. I'm suffering from this. I'm suffering from this. It's this autoimmune. I don't know what to do with it. Da, 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 da. All the information's out there. If, if it's not for me, it's from someone else. There's content and information out there from smart, abled people that are living the embodiment. And that's another thing. And I always say, trust mm. people that embody it. Don't just trust some lab coat. Trust the embodiment. That's I'm a lot a, of work. I'm, now I have to go well, and find it? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. You, you could find your, your soap opera. You could find your reality show. But you can't find something that's going to give you your life back. Right? You know, it's like, come on, people. Like, practice discernment. You know, exercise your faculties. Develop the skill set. We need you to be part of the solution. Because if you're not part of the solution, you are the problem you are the problem that's where all of our hard-earned energy and taxes and going to your to your debilitation and to your breakdown and so again so if you're listening to this i might sound like a total crazy guy but i'm just giving you kind of the root of like where where we need to start from i think what we should do i usually do this maybe we get on a second podcast and we can jam out like 30 minutes just like boom 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 like we can get into like technicalities of things that people can do every day to really help their uh you know boost their energy boost their cognitive yeah. ability we'll do that ne- we'll do that next time we'll do a part two yeah 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 i'll talk to you i'll talk to your manager or your agent your girl and uh and then we'll book we'll book a uh, a part two because i definitely want to get into like the you know the tips tricks and hacks on how to be prometheus um last <laughs> last question yes sir last question Neuralink. Yeah. You, you you getting it or not <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> come on what if everyone okay but hear me out what if everyone has it you're it's like gen three so they worked out the bugs and everyone is like these super genius bradley cooper and limitless nzt 48 beans i'm working on nzt so i'm working on a real nzt bro but- stop stop I'm not, no, no I'm don't serious. even don't even try to get my hopes up you realize like on my instagram it says life goal is to become bradley cooper limitless that's in my bio okay dude, my entire everything life I, everything i just broke down over the last three minutes all that stuff that's getting to that level and then we can take pharmacokinetics and approach it in a, in a very precise way because we're just talking about the, the whole system so the, the brain to get to that level of optimization where you're at 50%, 60%, 70%, it's not just a nootropic for the brain. It's a whole body system. Your pink toe, your, your, your pinky toe, if that gets infected, that can kill you, right? You have meridian points down from every teeth in your body that wrap around your body and go down to the bottom of your feet. That's reflexology and they wrap around organs. We know your anger is from your liver, right? So most people that have a fatty liver or they drink a lot of alcohol, they have a lot of anger because the liver holds that. All of these things are interconnected. So if we can open up the body, cleanse the body, then we approach it pharmacokinetically, or we can get to levels of brain power we've never seen before. I mean Whoa, that. And it's not yeah, dropping a metal electrode. Bro, don't your tur- you're, bro, you're turning me on right now. It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, I, cannot, I can't even believe this. Uh, yeah. but, okay. Okay. But is it like a program? It's not a pill. It's like a, you have to do a lot of things to get to NZT. Well, ultimately it will be a product. It will be a formula. Yeah. But my, but my opinion is, is that we, we, if we can break certain plateaus, then that formula is next level, right? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Cause now you're working from up here as opposed to down here. Well, it's kind of like stacking. It's kind of like taking your uridine monophosphate and then stacking it with fish oil on top of that and stacking it with a choline source. It's that's right. 
drastically right. different. 30% increase, ru- just straight up just taking it with DHA. That's right. And, and starting, and, and, and you can, that, that's a good way of putting it. I love that combination. Um, as long as the sourcing is, is on, on the yeah. level. Always get good things, brands, guys. All of those things can Don't be cheap out. <laughs> yeah. our, our Omega formula on Symbiotica is just absolutely the most next level docosahexanoic formula with yeah. all Omegas. Oh, all right. dude, I'm, I'm going to buy some. I'm going to buy some later. Phosphatidylcholine in there. I mean, it's just, it's just something else. But it's just like training, right? Like if you just come out the gate and take, you know, Tremblin and D ball and Winstraw, um, you're going to do a disservice to yourself in terms of your ability to grow. But if you've maxed out with your food, your nutrition, your sleep, your training, you've hit 220 solid, you know, you're six foot one, you're ready to rock and roll. Then you pour and you throw on the, the Tremblin sandwiches. Now yeah. we're living. <laughs> now, now we get somewhere. Does that make you get what I'm saying? I t- I'm not an advocate of that shit, but I'm just saying I just use no, it. Just a, a it's a metaphor. Yeah, it's an example. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Cool. cool. All right, man. Well, listen, I could talk to you for days. Um, I'm really excited about the NZT48. I definitely want to make your mind. <laughs> we'll do a part two and we'll go yeah. down all the different things of like what people can actually do, like the actual steps and pharmacology to, you know, services, whatever, right? Um, people that want to get to know you more, want to buy your stuff, want to send you money uh, to your OnlyFans. Well, how do people reach out to you and, uh, and uh, get a hold of you and buy your stuff? You were, I was going to have you manage my OnlyFans. I, I was oh, like, dude, this guy, once he, we get off this, whoo, he's, I was going to pitch him. He's got the grit. He's got the, he, 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 he's got the sleep hours. Perfect. This, this is the best news ever. Um, <laughs> by the way, we, we came out with a formula called molecular hydrate. This is an effervescent tablet that drops into water. Mm. This is the strongest molecular hydrogen on the market. It's 12 parts per million. It's like 4X anything out there. And this is the cornerstone of neutralizing all oxidative stress in the body. And literally, there's 1,100 studies on this. It's insane the, uh, what we're seeing right now. And I highly advise you and everyone listening to this, getting on that consistently. It's so I've tried thing. hydrogen tablets from water and wellness. Okay, and so if you've had it, it's, it's similar, just a little bit stronger. So I, okay, so here's the thing with that. I, I did try that. I did it for about three months. And I didn't feel any better or worse. Yeah. Is there something like going on in the background that I'm not aware of? I have no idea. We'd have to take a look at it and, 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 and see exactly. I don't know exactly what that tablet is. I don't yeah, know. It was from screen. water and wellness. I heard them on Ben Greenfield. Then I talked to Ben Greenfield and I was like, all right, cool. The, 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 the research on it is that you can't argue the research. And so yeah. I think if someone goes and looks at it and sees exactly how this is working, mm-hmm. because Molecular hydrogen in most antioxidants and nutrients, it's not a drug. It's not caffeine, right? Yeah. We want instant gratification. We want to take something. And, ooh, yeah, we want to take it, Adderall and get jacked up. There you go, NZT. But this isn't a drug. You're not, you're not losing anything because those things, you got to take a loss. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You take, you take a loss. There's, there's a net deficit. This yeah. is always a net gain but it's not swinging the pendulum after taking one version, right? One pill. Yeah. So this is the, the, how you do anything is how you do everything. If you want to be in this game long-term with longevity and have success, follow the science and take your time with it. That's really the approach. And it's pretty cool guys, actually with the uh, molecular hydrogen tablet, you throw it in the water and it sizzles. You know, like, oh. <laughs> At very least you feel like you're part of this like underground science project. Feel bad. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Right cool, man. Listen, I appreciate you jumping on. We're definitely going to do a part two and yep. uh, yeah, that's it. Any last words for the listeners before we end this thing? It's an honor to be here. Good talking with you, Justin. It's good to bro out, man. I needed, I needed a bro session. That was great. Yeah. I, who have you been talking to, man? I feel like I talk, I talk like this 24 seven. I think I, you know, I've been on a lot of podcasts lately with a lot of beautiful women and uh, uh, it's about, you know, like female health and all this stuff, which is, I love that. I love that subject. I'm all there for it. Of but course, it's good yeah. to like, it's good to bro out and, and, and talk about fun things like this. Dude, females, I have a lot of female listeners. Females love this stuff too. They might not yeah. advertise it, but they love biohacking, meta learning. They love it. I think they're going to enjoy what we just went through. I think Actually, there was a lot of I'll go even there. farther. I'll go farther. That I think females are better at, at putting the things into practice because females don't have egos like meathead guys like myself. Yeah, no. 
most guys possibly are listening to this and like, oh, these fucking guys are full of shit. No, fuck that, da, da, da. If they even got it, if, if they even listen to it, right? If yeah. they even make it through to this point. Look, we're all in this together. I'm all about brotherhood. I've tribe up with some of the best dudes ever. We need that. It's just like women need sacred sisters and all that kind of stuff. We need to be homies with our guys. We need to be there for each other. This whole, like, I need to be better than you bullshit. That needs to die. That's just ridiculous. 100%. 100%. Yep. All right, guys. Remember, be the gold, drink hydrogen water, and be a man or woman of your word. If you say you're going to do something, do it. And don't just do it because it benefits you. Do it because you said you were going to do it and do it because you actually care about the person that you're doing whatever you said you were going to do. That's it. Hug a tree, stand next to a tree, no podcast, or you're cheating. And that's it. This is the Justin Caviar Show, and we're out. Bye-bye, y'all. Peace.